Good day. In this video, we'll discuss a few commands that MATLAB has for initializing or prefilling arrays. We'll be using these techniques throughout this course. Two basic commands that are important to know are called zeros and ones. They do what their names imply. The zeros command creates an array of all zeros. In parentheses after the word zeros, we need to provide the size of the array to be produced. If we list just one number, a square matrix is made. This means it will have an equal number of rows and columns of the size that you command. If two numbers are listed, the first number dictates the number of rows, and the second dictates the number of columns. The ones command operates the same way, except it fills in all ones. Here's an example of the ones command used to create a 3x3 three three matrix of all ones. Since it is a square matrix, only a single size number is needed. And here's an example of the zeros command used to create a 4x2 matrix of all zeros. What if we want a matrix filled with numbers that are not zeros or ones? Well, there's not a direct command for that, but there are a couple simple ways of adapting a zeros or ones matrix. The first example shows creating a matrix of all threes. It does this by first creating a ones matrix of the desired size and then multiplying by 3. The second example shows creating a matrix of all fives. Here we first make a zeros matrix of the desired size and then add 5 to all of those zeros. Two other initializing commands are shown on this slide. The first is the I command, which is short for identity matrix. This is a matrix that is all zeros except for ones on the main diagonal, that is, moving from top left to bottom right. The other command, magic, is a fun one. It creates a magic square, which is a matrix in which each of the rows, columns, and diagonals sum to the same number. In this 3x3 three three example, they all add to 15. In one sense, it is an interesting mathematical nuance. For us learning MATLAB, it is a good way of making an example matrix with a variety of numbers. The last operator we'll explore in this video is the colon operator, used for making incremented vectors. We will use this quite often, since it is useful to have a list of numbers all spaced by a regular step size. The general format is shown here. Begin with some variable equals, a normal assignment operation, then separated by colons lists the starting value, the increment amount, and the ending value. In this first example, a becomes a vector that starts at 3, increases by 2 each step of the way, and ends at 11. In this next example, the step size is actually negative, so this starts at an 8 and then moves down to a 5. In example C, we leave out the increment amount and only provide the starting and ending values. MATLAB, by default, will assign an increment amount of 1. This is a little shortcut that is commonly used because 1 is the most common step. And finally, we see how the colon operator can be performed first to create a vector, then that vector is modified by an arithmetic operation, in this case multiplication. Now, I see a vector going from 0 pi to 2 pi in steps of 1 half pi. I could have also done this by including pi next to the 0, the 0 0.5, and the 2, but it is more efficient to type as shown here.